China's communist regime has always used Japan's aggression against its neighbors during World War II as propaganda to arouse anti-Japanese sentiment. In recent years, this propaganda machine has cranked up its volume and anti-Japanese narratives are in. Attacking celebrities for their pro-Japan posts on social media are popular acts of nationalism in China. As the world mourns the loss of Shinzo Abe and praises the former Japanese leader for his visionary leadership in geopolitics and his effort in increasing Japan's international presence, they are appalled by some Chinese citizens' unconscionable celebration of Abe's tragic death. What do Chinese really think of Abe? Let's look at Sino-Japan relations from a different perspective. Hello, welcome to Lay's Real Talk. I'm Lei. So, in the aftermath of Abe's tragic death, the Chinese have displayed troubling divisive responses. Brainwashed nationalists celebrated his assassination. Greedy merchants turned Abe's death into a marketing opportunity. Conscionable Chinese spoke out against their conducts. And some brave ones are asking the impossible question, when will China see a leader who is respected around the world like Shinzo Abe? Like the rest of the world, Chinese people love Japanese food, technology, products, and even their sense of style. Yet there is an important aspect of Sino-Japan relations that people don't talk about. That is, Japan has generously contributed to China's economic growth over the past 40 years. In 1972, China and Japan normalized diplomatic relations, and in 1978, the two countries signed the Treaty of Friendship and Peace. In the following year, during a visit to China, Japanese Prime Minister Masayuhi Ohira announced that Japan would provide official development assistance, or ODA, to China, making Japan the first country before Germany, France, and the United Kingdom to provide assistance to China. Of the 24 countries that have provided economic aid to China, Japan was not only the first, but it was also the country that provided the most, accounting for more than 60% of the total aid received by China, according to a Chinese media report published in 2013 on Heshun.com. Some Chinese say that Japan's financial aid was a form of reparation for the Sino-Japan War in the 1930s and 1940s. Regardless if that's true, the Japanese aid played a crucial role in China's economic growth. According to the Heshun report, for 20 years, Japanese ODA loans accounted for 20% of China's annual national construction capital budget, the highest year being over 40%. By the end of 2007, the Japanese government had provided a total of 47.4 billion US dollars in aid to China. The amount exceeded the aid that China received from the Asian Development Bank or the World Bank, according to the Chinese report. When the aid first started in the 1980s, the focus was on large-scale infrastructure, such as harbors, railroads, and power stations. For example, the Beijing Capital International Airport and Shanghai Pudong International Airport were financed by Japanese government loans. In the 1990s, the emphasis shifted to water and sewage systems in major cities, gas supplies, and measures to reduce poverty. On the Yangtze River alone, five bridges were built by Japan's assistance programs. About 4,600 kilometers of the total 13,000 kilometers of China's electric railroads were developed with Japanese loans and 12% or 60 of the 470 large berths in Chinese ports were built with Japanese funds. Since 1980, Japan has also provided assistance to China in the form of non-reimbursable aid in healthcare and education and supported projects such as the China-Japan Friendship Hospital. In 1988, on the 10th anniversary of the Treaty of Friendship and Peace between China and Japan, then Prime Minister Takeshida visited China and pledged $100 million for a Japan-China Friendship Environmental Protection Center, which became operational in May 1996. In 1999, Japan provided $160 million in free assistance to establish an environmental IT network system in 100 Chinese cities. In October 2001, 
Japan established the China Economic Cooperation Program and shifted focus from infrastructure to environmental protection, social development, human resources training, technology transfer, and so on. On October 28, 2004, Premier Wen Jiabao, while meeting with Japanese Prime Minister Koizumi Junichiro, recognized Japan's great contribution to China's economic development. During the 1990s, however, the Japanese stock market crashed and the economy stumbled for a long time. Yet Japan's ODA to China peaked twice in 1994 and 1999. Benefiting from growing foreign investments and aid programs, the Chinese economy took off. Wen Jiabao's comment was made at the time when the two countries remained economically engaged but were becoming politically distant. This was because in 2001, the Chinese regime objected strongly when Prime Minister Koizumi visited Yasukuni Shrine, a symbol of Japan's militarist past. In 2005, anti-Japanese demonstrations were held in China. However, Japanese ODA to China peaked again that year, reaching a record $1.7 billion. But it began to decline due to growing anti-Chinese sentiment in Japan and also due to China's rapid economic growth. In 2006, Shinzo Abe was elected Prime Minister of Japan for the first time, but his Liberal Democratic Party lost the election in 2007 and he resigned. Five years later, in 2012, Abe was re-elected as party president and became prime minister for the second time. By then, China's GDP had already surpassed that of Japan to become the world's second largest economy after the United States. Opposition in Japan to giving ODA to China grew stronger. In 2012, Japan's government nationalized the Senkaku Islands, leading to more anti-Japanese demonstrations in China. In 2018, on the 40th anniversary of the Treaty of Friendship and Peace, Shinzo Abe visited China, making it the first official prime ministerial visit since 2011. He hoped that the Chinese leader would reciprocate a visit, but Xi Jinping has not. In that same year, 2018, Shinzo Abe ended the ODA program after 40 years. Japan saw no need to provide assistance because China was already a major world economic power. Regardless of the politics, people of China and Japan are connected. Many Chinese may be voiceless, but they are not fooled by the anti-Japan propaganda. A handwritten thank you note that Abe wrote to the hotel cleaning staff after he attended the G20 summit in Hangzhou in 2016 is widely circulating on Chinese social media. The Chinese admire his civility. They know that CCP leaders would not do such small acts of kindness. Some talk about Abe's wish to help his wife with her little restaurant after his retirement. It's such a down-to-earth, humble wish that they don't see in CCP leaders. But what touches them the most is the fact that this leader, who fought for his country and loved his people, is so well respected globally. They are amazed by how a man with a gentle Asian demeanor could be so powerful and influential on the world stage. This gives the Chinese both hope and despair. They hope that their leader would exhibit such qualities and garner the same respect. But the hope turns quickly into despair as they ask the impossible question. When will China ever see a leader like Shinzo Abe? There's no answer to that question. One writer wrote that the only Chinese who had received the same level of respect and admiration internationally was Madame Jiang Kai-shek, who appeared on the cover of Time magazine three times and was the second woman to address both houses of the U.S. Congress in the 1940s. Chinese communist leaders may be commanding the world's largest propaganda machine and the largest military, but they're missing something in gaining true respect, humility, and kindness. Those two qualities are simply not compatible with communist values. Here's a video on Madame Jiang Kai-shek and another video on why Chinese have bad manners. I thank you for watching. Please like and share my videos and I'll see you soon.